Briefly, evaluation is a relatively new field of professional practice, at least in the western part of the world, specifically the U.S. where I'm located. Um, it's had a rapid expansion over the last 60 or 70 years, partly accompanying uh, the emergence of the Great Society programs in the 1960s in the U.S. Uh, to witness its testimony to its growth uh, 60, 70 years ago, there were one or two evaluation societies. Now there's well over 160. Accompanying that development of the field, there's been a development of different kinds of evaluation, different approaches to, different genres of evaluation, um, which mirror evaluation's emergent role and development over these last decades. Um, the history specifically reflects uh, different expanding ideas about who evaluation is for, the different kinds of audiences and questions that evaluation can take up. And that's what this presentation is focused on, these different kinds of approaches to evaluation each addressing, each engaging with the questions and concerns of different audiences. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on three of these um, as illustrative of the range of ways of doing evaluation and the kinds of audiences that can be engaged. For each of the three genres that I've selected, I'm going to address these kinds of questions or concerns. Who has contributed to this? And my view is a US-centric view, because I'm, I'm an American and selected common places of evaluation, including the questions, the criteria for judging quality, typical designs, and what values get advanced in that particular approach. Let's start with the first one, a policy-oriented evaluation. Major contributors you see listed there. You may recognize at least the name of Donald Campbell. Campbell. Um, the purpose of policy-oriented evaluation is to address policymakers' questions. Um, this is often relevant for a mature program that has been developed and tested and re re refined over time. Um, and the questions are usually how well is, do the students or participants in this program do on the average. A program is judged by answers to that question. Statistically significant outcome attainment is the primary criterion uh, for judging quality of, of this uh, programs in this genre. And many of you are probably familiar with the popular methodology of experimentation. That's a very appropriate for policy-oriented evaluations because the questions are, how well do people do in this program compared to people who do not have the program? Privileged are policy standpoints and outcomes and questions of average, average effects in the, in the policy-oriented genre. And that really was kind of the starting point of many evaluation um, approaches. Moving on from that, um, we've had a very wide development of thinking of evaluation, not just to answer policymakers' questions, but for other kinds of learning and utilization in different contexts. Major contributors include those three eminent American evaluators that you see listed. This kind of evaluation is typically um, oriented to program leadership and staff, people on the ground in leadership positions, the principals of a school, the leaders of a small nonprofit company. Um, they're interested in, in a variety of different kinds of questions about outcomes and processes and implementation and context. Um, so there's not just one kind of question or purpose uh, uh, engaged. The purpose, broad purpose is to contribute to the quality of the program and to the usefulness of the evaluation for the program, but many specific kinds of questions are possible, like how well does the program's theory of change work in practice in these particular contexts? How well does the program address the priority needs of diverse program participants? Are the kinds of questions that you might ask of a, an evaluation for learning um, approach? Quality criteria um, may include outcomes, but just as often they will include how meaningful and consequential are the experiences of people in the program? Does it matter to them in some way? And how well does this program design fit these particular contexts? So moving on to design, there's no particular kind of design in this approach, unlike policy-oriented approach, which typically prefers an experimental design. Um, more important are the substantive questions being addressed and the context at hand. So designs are, are, des are created to fit the, so those substantive questions and the particular context being evaluated. There's often a mix of methods used because those are relevant to the questions posed, but there's no particular design that's privileged in this approach. The values that are thereby advanced in this kind of evaluation for learning and use approach are learning, utilization, a privileging of context, and both process and outcomes in a program um, can be uh, considered as targets for evaluation resources. 
And this third cluster of uh, evaluation approaches, democratic, participatory, and critical, I'm going to focus on democratic evaluation. Major contributors are American Ernie House and uh, Britishman Barry McDonald. Um, this, again, is less uh, structured pr a priori than the policy-oriented approach, and there could be a wide range of uh, multiple audiences for a democratic evaluation. But specifically included in those audiences are the intended beneficiaries of the program and their communities. The purpose of an, a democratic evaluation is really to assess the quality, meaningfulness, and consequences of a program experience specifically for the beneficiaries from their own standpoints, not from the design of the program, from, from the standpoint of beneficiaries, how well does this program work? So the purposes included in democratic evaluation can be to democratize decision making, bring more people into the process, and specifically to advance democratic values like equity. Questions include how well does this design and implementation match the particular needs of people in this context, what contextual factors must be addressed for this program to be sustainably effective, and many, many others. Again, putting in part the intended beneficiaries at the centerpiece of those questions. So quality criteria in a democratic approach, the program does respectfully fit its context. It's not imposed. Um, equity is advanced, equity of access, participation, and outcome. And in particular, the well-being of those who are least well served in this context is also advanced. And like the second genre of evaluation for learning and use, match to context and privileging the substantive agenda, agenda of an evaluation are more important in determining the design than any particular technical factors. And again, as befitting an evaluation for democracy or a democratic approach, the evaluation advanced are those of traditional democracies, equity, justice, and participation and voice. So in summary, Evaluation can take multiple forms, representing different traditions, genres, or, and histories thereof. Evaluation genres can be roughly categorized as addressing the different interests and information needs of different stakeholders, and thereby these different evaluation approaches do advance different kinds of values. But most central to the social practice of evaluation is therefore not the technical quality of the design and methods, but rather the questions and interests are addressed, whose questions and interests they are, and thereby how that evaluation is positioned in a particular context.